All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at ratios and similar polygons. This is section 7.2 in your book. Uh, remember last time we did talk about ratios. A ratio, plain and simply, is a fraction. And a proportion, remember, is a fraction that's equal to another fraction. You can cross-multiply when you have a proportion, and that's how we mainly solved many of our problems from last homework. For notes here today, two polygons are similar if they have the same shape but do not have the same size. Think of a model car and a real car. A little Hot Wheels car has the same shape as a real car, but they're certainly not the same size. If we have a polygon, let's start out with triangle ABC, and we want to draw a similar triangle to that. Well, maybe I'll double the sides. I'm going to double side AB and double side BC, so rather than a 2 by a 4 triangle, I'm going to have a 4 by an 8 triangle. We know that they're similar to each other because we just doubled all of the side lengths. Um, so we have essentially the same shape. Using a protractor, we can actually find out something more about similar polygons. At first you think, or at least what one inclination might have is, well, if we doubled all the sides, don't all the angles double as well? Not actually true. Remember when we had triangles, all triangles add up to 180 no matter their size. If I pull up these two triangles in GeoGebra, we have one triangle that's 2 by 4, one triangle that's a 4 by 8. Using your protractor, we can go ahead and measure any given angle, and in the other triangle, the corresponding angle. Notice that these two angles are the exact same size. In this case, both angles are 14.4. That angle, that angle, both 14.4. Similarly, the, with the other angles, angle E is a 90 degree, same with angle B. Angle A is going to be equal to angle D. They're congruent to each other. So, in other words, if you have two similar polygons, what do you notice about the angles? The angles are equal. The angles are congruent to each other. The side lengths are all doubled, and angles are congruent to each other. We say that two polygons are similar, if and only if their corresponding angles are congruent, like we saw in GeoGebra just now, and their corresponding sides are proportional. Notice in here we have a trapezoid that's on its side. It's not an isosceles trapezoid, but it's, it, is an, it is a trapezoid because of the parallel lines. ABCD trapezoid is similar to EFGH because they're the same shape, and all their angles are congruent. A is congruent to E. B right here is congruent to F, C is congruent to G, D is congruent to H. Those are all congruent to each other. However, our polygons are not congruent because they're not the same size. We can write a similarity statement just like we wrote congruent statements, like triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ, but similarity statements only use one single squiggle which means similar to. We can say that ABCD is similar to EFGH. This is called a similarity statement. On your homework you'll see it asked write a similarity statement. This is what it's talking about. Similarity statement right there. On the other hand, um, well a lot, a lot of angles are congruent to each other. On the other hand, a similarity ratio tells you how much bigger one triangle or one polygon is than the other. In this case, if we divide two congruent sides, or two similar sides, excuse me, like 6 and 12, AB is similar to EF. Notice that AB were the first two letters, EF are the first two letters. AB over EF, 6 over 12, is one half. Same with any other corresponding sides, 4 over 8. Notice that DC are the last two letters. GH are the last two letters. They're corresponding to each other. Divide 4 over 8, you're also going to get a half. Same with 5 over 10, you're going to get a half. 5.4 over 10.8, divide that on a calculator, you're going to get a half. We say that our similarity ratio is 1 half because the small one is 1 half the size of the big one. Remember, order does matter. If I write ABCD and EFGH, then 
if B is the second letter, F is going to be the second letter as well. And B and F are congruent to each other because they're angles. If we want to determine that two polygons are congruent or similar to each other, we need to make sure that one, they have same angles. So two tests. One congruent C U N G R U E N T angles. And two, we need to have similar side lengths. For this first set, if we go ahead and test nine and six, nine over six. If we put that into a calculator, 9 over 6, well, that's going to simplify. Divide both top and bottom by 3. That's going to simplify by 3 over 2, which is equal to 1.5. If we compare two other sides together, like the 6 and the 4, 6 over 4 is equal to 3 over 2 if you simplify it, which is also equal to 1.5. The angles are all congruent to each other because they're rectangles. Every single one of these is going to be a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to make some boxes here. 90 degree angles, 90 degree angles, everything's a 90 degree angle. So are, con are the angles congruent? Yes, all of the angles are 90 degrees. Check mark. Are all of these similar sides? They're all the sides similar lengths? Yes, both of them were increased by 1.5 in this direction. 6 times 1.5 is 9. 4 times 1.5 is 6. What we can do now here then is write our similarity statement. A, B, C, D is similar to E, F, G, H. And our similarity ratio. We already calculated the ratio. Ratio was 1.5, which was the same thing as 3 over 2. For every 3 that this, this rectangle has, the other one has 2. These next triangles are not similar. If you look at this triangle, notice that it's isosceles. If we have a 62 degree angle here, this other angle 62 degrees, that leaves only 56 degrees left for the top angle. If you do 180 minus the 62 minus the 62, we have 56 degrees left. That means that these two triangles are not similar to each other. A 36 degree angle versus a 56 degree angle, they're not the same. Are, are our angles congruent? No, we don't have that. So we would say that our triangles are not similar. The angles are not congruent. Even though the side lengths might be similar to each other, 10 and 5, 10 and 5, the angles were not congruent to each other. Also, looking at these triangles, notice that one is not a bigger version of the other one. If your job is to make model cars, suppose you're working for Matchbox and you want to make a model car of a popular racing car. The racing car is 1.8 meters by 5 meters. The model car is 6.3 centimeters by some amount of centimeters. What's cool about proportions is you do not need to convert units. You could convert both of these meters to centimeters, say this is 500 centimeters and 180 centimeters, but even if you, as long as you have the same units for both width and height, or width and length, and both the units for width and length, you're going to be fine. This is going to be very similar to our previous uh, lesson in 7.1. We can go ahead and set up a proportion Comparing width and length, so comparing width, 1.8, divided by length of 5. Compare width of 6.3 centimeters divided by length of x centimeters. We don't know how long it is. We can cross multiply. So 1.8 times x, and then the 5 times 6.3 will cross multiply. Simplify that down. 5 times 6.3 is a 31.5. 1.8x is still 1.8x. Divide both sides by 1.8 you're going to wind up with an x of 17.5 centimeters. Check and make sure that that is reasonable. If this length of the car is significantly bigger than the height or width of the car, then the length of the car, 17.5, had better be significantly bigger than the width of the car, 6.3, and it is, so that checks out. 
couple of questions for you. What do you get when you combine a similarity symbol with an equal sign? Well, if you go ahead and write those out, similarity symbols like that, equal signs like that, guess what you make? You make a congruent symbol. You make a symbol with two equal lines, two parallel lines, and a squiggle on top. Why is that? Well, similar, similar polygons are both equal in size, and they are a similar shape. So that's how the similar that's how the congruent symbol came to be. They're equal in size, they're a similar shape. You get a congruent symbol. If the similarity ratio for number two here, if the similarity ratio of rectangle ABCD to EFGH is one to nine, how do the side lengths of ABCD compare to the side lengths of EFGH? Well, for however big ABCD is, EFGH is nine times as big. Hope you enjoyed this one. Keep doing geometry. Take care.